What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 12 of our data visualization with matplotlib and Python tutorial video series. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is more customization of various colors as well as doing some fills. So with that, let's go ahead and hop right in. First of all, what I want us to go ahead and do is comment out this section and then uncomment this section. If you don't know how to do that, you bolt, you know, you highlight everything, alt 3 to comment, alt 4 to uncomment. Now, uh, so at this point, let's do that and then also come up here and instead of 10D, we're going to use 10Y or 10 year. Also, let's pick a different company besides Tesla because Tesla hasn't really been around for very long. So let's go with eBay. E B A Y. So let's go ahead and run that one. And so here we have uh, the 10 year price for eBay. Now, uh, the first thing I want us to go ahead and do is instead of, you know, the title being whatever, let's make the title the stock. So that'll give us a little more space uh, to work with here. We'll keep stock there. That's fine. Uh, everything else can remain the same. So we'll close out of here and the first thing I want us to go ahead and check out is um, what we can do is like here in the axes. Okay, first of all we colored the grid, that was fine, but the next thing that we can color is like we can do AX1 dot, um, let's do X axes dot label dot set underscore color and we can change the color of these labels. So we can do that with the X axes, we're changing that to cyan. Then we can do that as well to the Y axis and we can change that to red or something. So we can save and run that. And so now you can see that label, right? Date is now cyan and price is red. Okay, so there's a quick example. Um, the next thing that I, we can do is like, let's look again at the chart and we can see that, you know, we've got um, basically uh, the prices here for eBay I make a lot of sense. That's pretty funny that it averages out to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. eBay is quite the volatile stock. Anyway, um, let's say we actually like only wanted very specific numbers. Uh, the way that we can do that is we can say ax1.set underscore y ticks. And we can set those ticks as, let's say, um, 0, 25, 50, and 75. Okay, let's say we want to set the tick markers as that. So we can save and run that. And we're able to do that, right? So 0, 25, 50, and 75. So if you want something very specific, you can make those marks. Now, uh, the next thing I want us to go ahead and cover is going to be fills. So with fills, what we can do is we can fill something. Now, right now, we're, fill, like we're, we're plotting, let's say, uh, price. So what if we did, instead of plotting price, let's comment that out, and let's actually do uh, ax1.fill underscore between, and we want to fill between what? We date, close P, and then a basically a price, right? So date, close P, and like zero. Okay, so we'll fill between there, and we're going to get an error about the legend because we don't have a label. So just keep that in mind, it's coming. Okay, so now we've got this fill and we start at zero and what it's done is it's basically filled between zero and the price. So some people like to visualize stock price this way rather than just a simple line. Now, of course, we can do kind of the same thing we've done in the past and we could just go ahead and let that line plot and then we would also get our legend. Okay, so we could do something like that and that's totally fine. Now, the next thing uh, that we can do with fills is a lot of times people add like a slight alpha to fill because fill will fill. So if there was something else there, we would cover it. But if we add some or we take away from alpha, what we're able to do is because alpha is a degree of opaqueness, uh, what we can do is uh, still see whatever was there. So what we can say here is uh, alpha equals 0 0.3, let's say. Okay. So there we go, we've got the line, and if we, we wouldn't see this solid blue line if we weren't plotting that solid blue line, just for the record. Um, we just happen to be plotting that right now. So one, another thing that we could do is, for example, um, so we've got this price here. What if we wanted to maybe, instead of doing this fill, like let's get rid of this fill, and like maybe, 
maybe we bought this stock. Let's say we bought this stock at $25. Okay, so we bought eBay at $25. Um, an example might be, or actually, let us let me restart this real quick. Let's see, what, where's the starting price? Yeah, okay, so let's go with the start price here. Um, as, like, we'll say we actually started buying into eBay at $36, okay? So that way it'll kind of make sense on the chart anyway. <laughs> so let's say we start at $36. What we're going to do is um, we'll keep plotting date. And instead of doing fill between like this, an interesting thing that we can do is we can say fill between, uh, instead of, let's say instead of close P, we could say 36. What if we did something like that? We'll leave the other plot actually. So let's run that real quick. And now you can see that it always fill, it always fills based on the 36 number, right? So we invested here, that's profit. This is loss, right? And then this is profit. Well, an interesting thing that we can continue doing is we can actually uh, fill based on a little bit of logic. So here we're saying date, close P, and actually what we could do is we could say between close P and then close P of zero. So this would be the first price that we have on file for that company. So we could run that one more time, hopefully, and that should be the same thing, right? So now we could plot any company and assuming we invested in that company at its like IPO, uh, we're good to go. So we could plot say, uh, you know, Twitter, okay, let's say. And that would be an example of Twitter's, you know, price and our profit or loss with Twitter. Now, moving back to eBay though, that's really what I'm interested in doing. Uh, we'll do eBay and then <clears throat> we'll fill between these numbers, but then we can add logic. So we've got alpha equals 0 0.3. What we can do is before alpha or really after, we can add another uh, keyword argument here. And that keyword argument will be where without the caps. So where is equal to, and then we're going to say where close P is greater than the close P zero. That should work. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, so let's run that real quick. Okay, so every time the price was greater than uh, that 36-ish dollar value, it's filling it. So what if, okay, so we're investing. So let's say uh, we actually want to make, give it a color. So we're going to say uh, face color. So it has a face, basically, is that's what happens with polygons. And then also polygons have an edge color but we're not really gonna worry about that for now. We'll just give it a face color. Uh, so that should be good. So that would be, you know, gain, right? Green would be gain, and then below green would be loss, so we would maybe make that red. So let's have maybe 0.5 alpha. Let's take this exact line, copy it, paste it, and then we're gonna instead, where close is less than that starting point value, we make it red, okay? So now we can save and run that, and then we have a chart like this, right? So this is our loss. So these are sad days for us, and then these are happy days for us, <laughs> okay? So uh, we can do that, or again, we can use um, Twitter as another example, right? So gains, loss, gains, loss, okay? So there's an example of just a few of the customization options that we can do um, with like fill between, and then also we colored some other stuff, but mostly I just wanted to show the fill between, but Again, the fill between, it's hard because it doesn't, you can't have a label with it. So if you really wanted a label, you know, you would have to, you know, maybe you would do something like this, like AX1, AX1.plot, and then nothing, nothing, line width equals five, label equals uh, loss, and then color equals, whoops, red, right? And then you could come through here, paste, green gain and then now we'll add uh, let's add that alpha too so uh, alpha equals 0 0.5 alpha equals whoops alpha equals 0 0.5 something like that and now we've got you know price loss would be the red and then gain is the green fill and all that so anyways um, there's like an example how you can use fills for all kinds of stuff we'll actually come back to fills again in a little bit doing an even more dynamic fill than this, but 
that'll do for now. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.